Hey guys, happy Saturday. Just having a good day. Welcome to my uh, daily update video. Hey, in a moment, I'm going to continue with some thoughts on how to live by the desires for God, how to let God's desires fill you and become your desires. So more on that in a moment, but uh, how's your day going? So I'm in France this week. Um, it's a beautiful day here in France. I actually wanted to record this outside and it's just so sunny that, um, and I'm going to burn up. I don't have any suntan cream. So just your day's going well. Um, I have spent the morning in Swedish purgatory, otherwise known as Ikea. It's the same the world over, but um, just buying some furniture, uh, setting up my office in my French home here. So uh, <laughs> I don't know which is worse, going to Ikea, or I've got to sit there this evening with a screwdriver, look at the instructions. I find praying in tongues helps a lot when it comes to making Ikea furniture. Just close your eyes, pray in tongues and hope for the best. <laughs> so uh, that's my plan for the day. Um, hey, tomorrow, if anybody needs friends are in this area in France, I'm going to be speaking in uh, Jean-Luc and Debbie Naka's church, uh, Zoe, Eglise Zoe, um, near Monistrol. And looking forward to that. If you're interested in details, message me for that. And I'm going to be in Lyon. Uh, I'm going to be connected with some pastors in Lyon later in the week. And I need to take a, a French exam. Pray for me. So that's my plan. And uh, good. But hey, let's continue talking about the desires of God. So I began uh, a couple of days back, I think, anyway, um, talking about how God, God doesn't want us to live by willpower. God does not want us to try to be Christians. It's not our effort that will make us good Christians. And frankly, you will fail. Yeah, you won't please God. You'll be a miserable failure and uh, you'll never make it. That's the good news. Um, and no, the real good news is God actually wants to fill us with his desires and that um, in a sense, we're completely free, but we only desire the things God desires. And that's a really great place to be. Come on, it's really great to want the right things. I began this series um, quoting Psalm Oh, excuse me, I've lost it again. I think it's Psalm 40 verse 8, which speaks prophetically of Jesus, but also of you and I, um, where it says, I delight to do your will because your law is written within my heart. Let me say that again. I delight to do your will. Why? Because your law, your word is written within my heart. And uh, come on, I really just, God wants us to desire him. God wants us to desire to read your word. Jeremiah said, your words were found and I did eat them. And your word was the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. It's not like some, um, some spiritual exercise, like I've got to go to the gym and just sitting there plodding away through something. We should delight to read God's will. We should delight to worship him. We should delight to spend time with him, to think about him, to share him. And again, if, if you're listening to this and you're saying, Graham, that sounds really nice, but actually I don't. Um, I'm, I'm glad because you're in the right place and I can really help you with that. The real problem is when we pretend that we do. The real problem is when we go to church and we're like, oh, I love reading the Bible. And the very second we're out of there, we don't open it. You know, the bottom line is people do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the reason most people spend more time on Netflix than they do the Word of God, it's because they like Netflix better. And um, just being honest about that is actually the first step to changing it. But today, I want to give you another key just to unlock that journey of living by the desires of God. I really just would love you to see that, that promised land, though, that perspective, that possibility that you can live in such a way where it's you desire to live in the right way. It's such a key and such a transformative principle in our lives. So let me give you one key today. And, um, you know, I, I really want to read one of my favorite Psalms if I can. Psalm 42. Psalm 42 says, as the deer pants for the water brooks. I won't read the whole thing. So my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God. My soul thirsts for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night. Mm. While they continually say to me, where is your God? 
When I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise, with the multitude that kept the pilgrim's feast. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why are you disquietened? Hope in God, for yet will I praise him for the help of his countenance. For my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, from the heights of Hermon, from the hills Mizar. Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All of your waves and billows have gone over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. In the nighttime, his song shall be with me. You can carry on reading there, but I, I would encourage you. There was a season in my life I would read, I say just read, but I would read and pray that. I would make it my prayer every day. And it's actually such a great season. And um, how, do we, how do we walk in the desires of God? Again, just really one key today because it's such a great key. Catch this. It takes God to love God. Yeah, it takes God to desire God. The desire from God is not something you work up. It comes from God itself. Look at it this way. Look at the relationship Jesus has with his father. Jesus has with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has with Jesus. The Holy Spirit has with the father. You know, it's like, it's awesome. The desire Jesus has, the burning, passionate zeal for your house has eaten me up. Yeah, do you remember, there's that wonderful psalm, I was misquoted, but I think it's Psalm 22, the Psalm of the Cross, where David's writing prophetically of the cross, you know, the plow has plowed my back, and we're, in a way, we're seeing what Jesus is going through at the cross, and then in the midst of it, I always love this a little bit, literally, Jesus calls the Father, my darling, yeah, and I want you to see that the relationship that Jesus and the Father have had for all eternity, eternity is not from this eternity is infinity it's always been there god is outside of time the relationship jesus had with his father we we're not trying to work at building a relationship i'm working on my relationship with god forget your relationship with god you've been co-opted you've been placed in christ jesus your relationship you don't have a relationship with god you have jesus's shared relationship with god yeah john 14 20 in that day you will know but I am in my Father, you are in me, and I am in you. I'm the vine, you are the branch. I spoke about it yesterday. Excuse the tractor going by. But uh, come on, it's really important if you get that. The desire, you don't need to work up some false religious desire for God. The desire from God is Jesus' desire from God. Let that desire flow through you. Now, let's get real practical. How do we do that? Um, I think, firstly, there's a really... It's really important to get this. Do you know, if you stop eating, after a while, you stop being hungry. Pause, Sila. Go over that again. When you actually stop eating, after a while, you stop being hungry. You lose that appetite. And that's where many of us are. We're, in effect, in our spirit man, we've got that passionate desire for God. But in our soul, it's Netflix. <laughs> yeah, it's entertainment. It's you know, a shallowness, it's, it's things that don't always please God or don't always feed us. And uh, it's not necessarily love, joy, peace. It's interesting. Outside, I don't know if they've changed building, I think now, but outside of the BBC for about 80 years, as you came in, there was a scripture carved in stone on the wall of the BBC. And the scripture said, <laughs> whatever things are good and pure and lovely and virtuous, you know, praiseworthy, think on these things. What a joke if you know the BBC. They do the exact opposite every day, as many other outlets do. My point is, though, the way we... You don't need to get a desire for God. You've already got it in the spirit, man. What we need to do is release it. What we need to do is practice what we have. And, you know, there's no magic way of doing that. The way you actually get a desire for God's word is just begin reading God's word. I like to tell people in my church, just start with a verse a day. I mean, a chapter a day is nice, but start with a verse a day. If you'll begin reading it, you'll begin saying, actually, this is really good. Actually, that felt good. I'm really glad I did that. And you'll do it more and more. I, I trick people in my church. Don't tell them. I hope nobody's watching this. But I tell people, why don't you give a dollar every week in the offering? Okay, that's not much. 
You see, when they have some skin in the game, when they actually do that, a little piece of their heart goes with it. And if you begin giving a dollar a week, soon you begin giving five dollars a week and ten dollars a week. And soon you're walking as a mature Christian, you're tithing, you're honoring God with the first fruits. But you're not going to do that out of duty. I give. I don't give so I will be blessed. I am blessed so I give. Make sense? I don't give because there's some law hanging over my head. If you don't give, God's going to get you. If, if I never gave one penny to God in the rest of my life, God's going to love me. I'm in. The blood of Jesus gets me in. But because I'm in, I desire to give. But here's my point. I want to say this. Just practice. Bring your hunger to God. That's what David was doing in the psalm where he's, he's not feeling all that great, but he's like, soul, why are you downcasting me? Hope in God. And he talks about deep crying out to deep. Yeah, no man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God know no man except the spirit of God. Now we receive not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things freely given to us of God, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So what happens is, if you just begin practicing that hunger for God, Many years ago, um, about 15 years ago now, the Lord, I was praying one day and the Lord said, Graham, I want you to start calling me wonderful. And I was like, that's nice. And, um, you know, I would just start every day. I'd be like, Lord, you're wonderful. And if I'm honest, it didn't do that much for me in that soulish realm. I would just be saying, God, you're wonderful. I was doing it out of obedience. You know, take a minute and think, yeah, you're wonderful. And I just kept doing it, kept doing it. Probably 10 or 15 times a day, Lord, I just proclaim you're wonderful. And then I remember flying to a, a conference in Chicago. I was living here in France at the time and I'm flying this plane and I'm on the plane and I, I say those same words, Lord, Lord, you're wonderful. And it's suddenly like the heavens broke and the wonder and the awe of God. And I was, I don't think I was crying. I was just like, wow, you are wonderful. And I remember I stood up in this church in uh, the outskirts of Chicago in a conference and I said those words, I said, wonderful Jesus, wonderful Jesus. And it was amazing, the wonder of God got released in the room. Why? I wasn't conveying information. I wasn't saying, guys, get your notepad and pen out and write down, God is wonderful. Such as I had, gave I to those guys. And the wonder, like a spirit of wonder, if there is such a thing. If there isn't, I just invented it. Holy Spirit's a wonderful spirit. He was released in the room. Do you know, it's funny, people actually wrote a song from that experience on the wonder of God. Yeah, God wants us to live in awe and wonder. When the Lord brought back the captives from Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with song of joy. Then said they amongst the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. God wants us to live in awe and wonder. When Jesus filled Peter's boat in Luke 5 with the fish, it says Peter and those who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish. God wants to do astonishing things through the church, but first, he wants to astonish the church. And a lot of the church will never ever say this, but they're bored with God. I didn't believe that, Brother Graham. Well, why do you watch Netflix so much? Come on, the thing is like, we, we measure where we are by what we do. I'm not putting condemnation on you and giving you the key to break out of that thing. So why not just begin today saying, Lord, you're wonderful. Lord, I desire you. Well, I don't really desire him. Just keep saying it. Yeah, let the weak say, let the poor say, I am rich. Let the person who doesn't desire God begin to say, Lord, I desire you. I love reading your word. I desire your presence. I desire your people. I desire your, your mission. I love worshiping you. I love being with you, Lord. And watch what happens, Sila. Hey, I'm going to try and be back tomorrow with some more keys on desiring God. Have a wonderful day. Um, hi to all my friends in America. You're probably still waking up, but... Um, Cheering you on, having a great day. Hey, uh, for my friends in New England, we have Kathy Kirk as a guest speaker tomorrow. Kathy's a wonderful woman of God. She's going to be teaching, but I tell you, Kathy has some of the faith of Jesus I want you to catch. I want you to bring your catches out tomorrow and catch faith from Kathy. So, uh, Sturbridge Worship Center, 10 a.m. Be there. Thanks for watching. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you're down there. Check out the links below. Please consider signing up for our weekly email newsletter and uh, drop me a line. Love to keep in touch with you. Bye for now.